A reading from the letter to the Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The word of the Lord.
tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. But beginning next Sunday, we shift to the second proper preface for Lent, which talks about preparing with joy for the Paschal Feast. Because remember, the season of Lent is Easter. That's why we keep Lent. It's also true that as we near the midpoint of Lent, some of us perhaps are beginning to struggle just a tad with our Lenten disciplines. I would remind you, failure is not an example of your worth, but the opportunity for a fresh start. I encourage you to continue keeping Lent to the best of your ability. Which leads me to Lenten activities in your bulletin. All I really want to focus on is this coming weekend, which is a wonderful uh, whole array of opportunities. It begins with Station to the Cross at 5 o'clock on Friday. These wonderful woodcuts really do help us journey through Lent to the foot of the cross. And then, at 6 o'clock on Friday night, we're going to have a potluck supper in which we invite the fellow from Virginia Seminary uh, who will be coming from the Philippines, and she's able to come because of your generosity 20 years ago in acknowledging my anniversary here at St. Mary's. Well, technically 19 years ago. So, please come. One, potlucks are great. Everybody's a wonderful cook. And it's so much fun. Kids, everybody has a great time. You have a wonderful meal. You have wonderful fellowship. And plus, I'd love it for us to be able to welcome the Reverend Dr. Gloria Nathangal uh, with the kind of hospitality that extend to one another. Then Saturday, there's a quiet morning from 9 to 12 that I will lead. If you'd like to come set some time aside for yourself just to bask in the presence of God, know that is available to you. Also, there is a trip to the Holocaust Museum on Saturday. Remember that we are blessed to have a parishioner uh, whose work at the Holocaust Museum really allows us to see it uh, in a deeper light. And then, from 2 to 4 Saturday afternoon, uh, we will gather for the second showing of the movie The Way of Love, uh, which just everybody who saw it yesterday said it was just very powerful. So I commend that to you. Sunday, two things. The first is, believe it or not, Daylight savings time is back. So please come at the right hour for church. And then secondly, it's the Sunday when we do the Great Litany. We only get to do it once a year, but it is just um, a reminder that it is God who surrounds us with his love, and it is that love alone that keeps us safe as we journey.